Another quick 1201 Beyond review here, this time for Blade Runner 2049. Now, I'm going to have to get into a few spoilers, but overall, this will be a spoiler-free review, but I keep seeing all of these positive reviews, people calling this one of the best movies of not only the year, but of the decade. I'm curious if they saw the same movie I did. This movie is a hollow, hollow shell. It looks pretty on the outside, but there's no substance at all. There is absolutely no subtlety at all with the symbolism. A sledgehammer to the forehead would be more subtle than the symbolism in this movie. The plot is full of massive plot holes that no amount of explanation is going to bring back. The characters are paper thin. The writers of this movie don't seem to understand why the first movie worked and why it subverted the expectations of what you had. The original movie has its problems as well. It has story problems, it has pacing problems, it has character problems. And in the intervening 35 years, the makers of Blade Runner 2049 haven't seemed to figure out how to fix those same problems. In fact, they doubled down on them instead. There are no emotional stakes in this movie. The movie is full of filler. It's overlong. There's no reason this movie needs to be nearly three hours long. If you cut a good 45 minutes out of this film, you wouldn't lose a single ounce of the story. That's how little story there is. The plot relies on massive, massive coincidences that you just think to yourself, wait, what? For instance, here's one of the spoilers. So Blade Runner K is a replicant who is just finding out about the existence of Deckard, Rachel, and their offspring, which he is tasked with retiring. And it just so happens that the offspring actually is the person who implanted her own memory in K for him to be able to find, which gives him the emotional reasoning to not want to kill her and instead join the resistance. And this was a random case assigned to him. That is one hell of a coincidence. You have other things that make absolutely no sense in this movie, of characters actively working against their own best interests. There are so many different parts of this movie that seem to set up the mystery angle, but then in the payoff you go, wait, if they did that then that would actively be hurting the thing that they're looking for. For instance, the prostitute putting the tracker in Kay's pocket, which leads not the resistance to Deckard, but Wallace to Deckard, the man that they're actively working against, because they have to stop Wallace from finding Deckard. But if they find Deckard, it actually puts their movement in jeopardy, so there's absolutely no reason for this and then some people have said well she did that when she put that tracker in there that was the resistance looking for deckard no because love knew exactly where that tracker was and went directly to it so wallace is the one who was using the tracker it makes no sense the rest of this movie is full of these things where when you think about them for just a few seconds you ask yourself what in the hell just happened why would these characters do this Harrison Ford is living in the ruins of Las Vegas. We find out that having real wood is is some sort of rich man's thing, and yet there's all of these wooden structures, there's all of this paper and actual books just sitting in Las Vegas, which is supposed to be a radioactive zone, but all it takes is K take making one scan to find that there's no radiation out there. Literally, no one else thought to go out to the ruins of Las Vegas. There's all of this activity from the bees when all the animals on Earth are supposed to be dead. No one else thought to do this before this point. I can't even get into all of the plot problems in this. And then you have all of the Christ allegories. You have the idiotic real boy. You're a real boy. I actually expected them to bring up Pinocchio at one point. It's so unsubtle. I mean, he literally finds a Trojan fucking horse that was a Trojan horse in the plot. Robocop's Christ analogy was more subtle than this. Man of Steel's allegories were more subtle than this. 
The symbolism here is all over the place. The movie is slow as hell. It's pretentious. It's hollow. It's empty. It's shallow. And you see all these people assigning intelligence to something that just isn't there. That's the biggest problem of this movie. People think they're smart because they liked it. And no, this is not a smart movie. You are not smart simply for liking this movie. You are smelling your own farts. So yeah, Blade Runner 2049, I didn't like it.